Hey, wake out. up, we're on the air. All right, guys, hey, welcome to another episode of Driving with Andy and... I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> and Derek. Hey, we just came back from a uh, bed bug dog search, and uh, what I want to do is talk about uh, what issues that a new handler may have when they're going to do these searches. And I know it can be very challenging. Uh, maybe or maybe not the benefit of, uh, of Derek going out uh, on these bed bug searches that I happen to be there. Uh, I know that some of you that get the dogs trained by us and you go out and the very first time you're just all by yourself and uh, problem solving and, and having questions and that kind of stuff just isn't available to you. So what I want to do is, uh, is talk to Derek and interview him about the search to find out you know what things were going through his mind and what things he he uh, learned about today's uh, searches this was a real search we did in anaheim uh, it is a location that just recently got treated with heat and uh, they in two of the six apartments that we searched two of them had bed bug reported bed bug problems and um, and so we took maverick uh, i did three of the uh, of the apartments and derek did the other three mm -hmm. and so um what are your first thoughts? So anyway, this is Derek Bergner, the legend. Uh, <laughs> so what are your first thoughts about what happened on those searches today? Um, well, it, it it's all, all the public really sees, or what I saw before I actually got into this field was um, the dog is trained to do it, the dog alerts for it, that's it. Simple. Simple, easy, <laughs> cut and dry. No such thing. Really? Um, there's always little things to look at. It's definitely not a stagnant thing. You have to be moving. You always have to be constantly checking out what's going on. Right. Um, it, it's not just dog alerts for it. You're done. Right. You always got to see secondary signs, um, primary signs. Did the dog alert for you, or did he just alert because he wanted to be over with? Right. And you know, when we go to these apartments, uh, it, we can even tell them that you know to pick up all the the food and the distract distractions, all that kind of stuff. But um, people don't follow those directions. <laughs> <laughs> and so on the search did you find that there were times where you had no idea if he was actually searching for bed bugs or if he was uh, you know treasure hunting well I, I mean you could tell the difference part of being a new handler is kind of seeing the dog if he's interested no, in something knowing the difference knowing the difference right. is the big thing knowing the difference is really the big thing because you got to really understand is he interested in this because there's food in the corner that you're not looking at is there a toy that you're not looking at that you didn't pick up or is he really actually interested interested in it because he can actually smell what he's supposed to smell for right and so what we talked about is that when a dog becomes stationary and still normally they're doing something they shouldn't be doing because uh, if they're looking for something that's related to their toy they're eager they're happy they're moving because they know that a you know some type of game is going to begin yeah so there's a huge difference between a dog that's getting ready to play and a dog that's getting ready to eat or um, uh, reproduce because when a dog finds you know other dogs urine and feces and that kind of stuff that's where that part of the brain goes to um, so what other things besides that what well, well, experience today I, I mean um, a lot of it was just standard stuff making sure that um, you did the preliminary stuff letting the dog get in a feel for the room mm -hmm. then doing it um, one of the things that I had to watch out for was how hard I guided the dog. I didn't want to guide him too hard to where he was going to the same places I kept tapping, guiding him to, because then it wasn't a real search. He's just going, all right, well, he keeps saying something's there. I might as well just sit for him. Right. Right. Um, so I have to watch how hard I guide him. It's definitely something to yeah, do. That, that can be a fairly common um, issue because especially when you get in front of the customer, you begin to feel pressure. Mm -hmm. Like the dog's supposed to be doing something. <laughs> yeah. And then if the dog isn't sniffing where you would hope that he'd be sniffing, you begin to point it out and then you point it out harder and then you go, hey dog, I need you to really do this because somebody's watching. So that is a, a, a fairly common thing. So mm -hmm. um, there are a few other things we talked about today, but I can't recall what they were. What are, what are uh, well, we did the preliminary out? stuff where you got feel for a room, feel, yep. the, feel for the room. Um, we kept him constantly searching. Yep. Um, we made sure that he we went around the room a couple of times if he was interested in something. Yeah, a different direction. Yeah. So if he showed interest in something coming clockwise uh, and uh, even possibly sat because he felt that something uh, is something that we wanted him to do to ensure because we did have a couple of alerts and we mm -hmm. were able to um, to proof them and show that there was actually something there. One was a live bed bug. Uh, another alert led to um, 
uh, exoskeletons and evidence of bed bugs and then another alert we couldn't solve. So we had three alerts. Uh, all of them were in areas except for one in areas that had previous uh, bed bug yep. things going on. Uh, but seeing the live bed bug during one of the alerts was very, you know, it's always positive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, positive for us. Yeah. Not the owner. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I know. It's sad. Um, but uh, um, the the pressure sometimes we feel in front of the, the client can cause us to do things and talk dogs into alert and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So we have to be careful about that. I think that's probably one of the biggest problems we have. Um, we talked about something about a dog learning to be successful as opposed oh, to a yes. dog actually searching for the odors. Yeah. One of the things you said to me, and I don't think I'll ever forget it in however many times I will keep doing the uh, bed bug handling mm -hmm. or handling in general is uh, you said, make sure you're watching to see if your dog is being successful. Um, there, there's a difference in, is your dog actually making the find or is he trying to be clever and get the thing over with? Right. Um, I, I believe you're talking about how it, the boss employee relationship, mm. how um, <laughs> your employee will do everything they can to please you. And if they see that that one thing you're doing, is, they're doing is pleasing you, then they're gonna do it again and again. And I think you're right when you say the same thing with the dog. Right. That might, that might not fall into their job description, mm -hmm. like sucking up yeah. the boss. <laughs> yeah. We really want them to understand that they're supposed to do this job, not just please the boss. And a dog could very easily do that. Um, a, uh, a, a criminal case that I've been working on, that, that seems to be the case that the dog was trained to be successful. And, sex, and successful, what I'm talking about is the dog gets his reward. Mm -hmm. In the dog's mind, that's all he's trying to do, right? Yeah. When he's searching for the bed bugs, narcotics, explosives, he's trying to be successful. Successful. He's trying to get his reward. That ball? And so if the dog can learn to get that ball and he believes that this is the way that he gets that ball, then he's being successful. But that's different than the dog actually searching for and finding the odors. And so we have to be really careful both in our training and in our real deployments that the dog doesn't learn how to just simply be successful. Um, just like the uh, employee. Yeah. Are you, are you just trying to be successful? Well, I was just actually going to take a nice shirt. <laughs> That's a really nice shirt. Awesome. <laughs> so that is some really good stuff. I mean, we, um, uh, you know, really, I think for me, what I really like is watching the, the, the process. Um, uh, for some reason, I really think that Maverick seems to like you better than me. I think so too. <laughs> I like that a lot, really. I thought that dog loved me, but he really enjoyed working for you today. So I really appreciate that, uh, that, that, um, that camaraderie, that bonding that you have with that dog because that's what I live for. I live for watching a dog bond with its handler and actually respond to both not only training but to real deployments and that, that's what I saw today. So just keep up the good work and uh, we'll make a few more of these videos for uh, all of you out there because I know some of you struggle with the very same thing that we, uh, we had today. Great. So this is another episode of Driving with Andy. And Derek. <laughs> I said it. I didn't want to say uh, it. All right, guys. Sorry for all the jocularity, but we've gone on three bed bug searches uh, together and always some shenanigans happen. So it's uh, it's been a good time. Uh, I really enjoy it. So keep up the good work. I'm so sorry Maverick likes me better than you. Goodbye. <laughs>